A baby has been born in Mexico using a new three-person fertility technique. The five-month-old boy has the unusual DNA from his mum and dad, has the usual rather DNA from his mum and dad, plus a tiny bit of genetic code from a donor. US doctors took the unprecedented step to ensure the baby boy would be free of a genetic condition which his mother carries in her genes. Sean Murray is the CEO of the Australian Mitochondrial Disease Foundation and joins me now in the studio. Sean Murray, thank you so much for dropping in today. So much of this is about mitochondria. Can you just talk us through sort of what it is and how uh, mitochondria can become defected? Yeah, so mitochondria <coughs> exist in just about every cell of our body and their job's fairly simple. Their job's to basically create the form of energy that our bodies need to sustain life. And when they don't work properly, when that energy production process don't work, doesn't work properly, it can result in something called mitochondrial disease, which is a potentially fatal and genetic disorder that can affect just about every part of our body. And typically patients with mitochondrial disease will suffer from multiple organ dysfunction and potentially um, mitochondrial disease is also potentially life-threatening. So in this case, the mother knew that she could pass this on to her baby. And so what did they actually do in order to remove that disease? So the, from what we understand from the reports, the mother's undergone an IVF technique called mitochondrial donation yep. or mitochondrial replacement. So basically at the cellular level, at the embryonic stage, the mother's defective mitochondria has been replaced with mitochondria from a donor mm. and to basically bring in the healthy mitochondria and um, with the objective of not passing on mitochondrial disease to the child. It's extraordinary when you think about what's actually going on there. Um, now in terms of the DNA that's passed on I understand that only a small 0.1 percent is from the donor DNA yeah. so the child who was born is effectively as close as you could get to these two people's Yeah, child. I mean, uh, the, the Australian Mitochondrial Disease Foundation certainly looks at this term of three parent babies as somewhat simplistic and a little mm. bit inappropriate, and, and as has been backed up by ethical reviews, etc. And the, don't, the DNA that we typically think about when we hear DNA comes half from mum, half from dad, and it exists in the nucleus of the cell. Yeah. And this mitochondrial DNA sits outside the nucleus of the cell and represents just a tiny fragment of DNA whose job, as we understand it, is only to drive that function function of the mitochondria to produce the energy. So certainly not going to change how we look or how we feel or um, mm -hmm. any sort of heritable or um, personally identifying trademarks. The mitochondrial DNA as we know it is just to to um, drive the function of the mitochondria. Such a great explanation. So then why do we refer to it as a three-person baby? Is it, is it kind of the sexiness of the sound of it, the sort of idea that, wow, three people, genes, you know, yeah, should I, that be tempered by us as well in the media? Look, I, I think the Australian Mitochondrial Disease Foundation would certainly encourage the media to temper that. It does mm. result in a lot of publicity, which for a disease like mitochondrial disease, which most people won't have heard of, mm. and even more people don't really know what it is, it's certainly, on one hand, a welcome opportunity to put it in the limelight, but it is certainly a little bit uh, inappropriate, this, this term of three-parent baby. So in terms of mitochondrial disease, are there any other diseases which this kind of technique could be used for? This is the only one. No, I think that this, disease, this technique is limited to the prevention of some types of mitochondrial disease. It's not yeah. applicable to all types of mitochondrial disease, but um, I, I think that what we need to keep in mind is that this technique has been developed primarily and purely for the objective of preventing the transmission of this horrible disease from mother to her child. Now, um, the parents had this done in Mexico, clearly because they couldn't get it done in the US. Is it true that the UK has passed laws for this to happen there as well? So where do we stand in Australia with this? So in Australia, the current legislative framework prevents this technique in being offered to, um, to cl uh, through IVF clinics here in Australia. The, it's correct that the legislative framework has been changed recently in the UK mm. to legalise this technique. It's undergoing some fine regulatory checks at the moment to make sure that they've got the right checks and balances in place um, but in uh, in the US while we understand that the legal framework would permit it there are some further regulatory restrictions so uh, not really understanding all the specifics of this case it mm. does appear that they've gone to another geography but in Australia um, it is currently um, that our legislation would prevent this from being offered and that's something the Australian Mitochondrial Disease Foundation is working on yeah. with the regulators and the policy makers and politicians calling on them that maybe it is time for us to have another look at that and really see that we can't change the legislative restrictions here to offer this as a choice for women who are at risk of passing on this disease to, um, to have a, a, a happy and healthy child. 
Sean Murray, CEO of the Australian Mitochondrial Disease Foundation. Thank you so much, not only for dropping in uh, with a bit of a crutches as well, but also for explaining that so uh, clearly for us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Colleen. you.